G'day, I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're going to look at metatarsal fractures, there's frank fractures, and calcaneal fractures, all in the time it takes to drink one coffee. Sounds busy, so let's get a wriggle on. Fractures at the base of the fifth metatarsal occur when you have an inversion of the foot whilst the foot is in plantar flexion, as you can see here. Ninety percent of the time the injury will be an avulsion injury, where the peroneus brevis, also known as the fibularis brevis, its tendon pulls off the base of the fifth metatarsal. The fracture is usually orientated transversely. It's small and doesn't reach up to where the metatarsal meets the cuboid. The treatment is usually pretty simple. Generally it's in a weight-bearing boot like a cam boot. Now if you have your foot in plantar flexion and get a significant adduction force, you can get a Jones fracture. This is more distal in the diaphysis, generally about two centimeters from the tip of the fifth metatarsal. It's generally horizontal and being extra articular, it doesn't go into the joint. That area of bone has pretty crappy blood supply. And if you add the distracting effects of the tendons, the Jones fracture has a high non-union rate, some say up to 50%. As a result, unlike the avulsion fracture, the Jones fracture needs to be immobilised and the patient non-weight bearing. I'd refer these to an orthopaedic surgeon as often in an active young person, they will perform an open reduction in internal fixation. Oh yes, remember that the base of the fifth metatarsal has an apophysis seen here alongside a fracture. It's orientated longitudinally, um, turns up about the age of 10 years in girls and 12 in boys, and fuses in the next two to four years. Now I just want to mention the March fracture, not because it occurs in March, but because it's a stress fracture that's seen with repetitive trauma, which is like marching. They most commonly occur around the neck of the second metatarsal and can be tricky sometimes to see on x-ray. The treatment, well, often you'll start with non-weight bearing then progress to a stiff soled walking boot for six to eight weeks, and they can be a bugger to heal but rarely require operative intervention. On to the Liz Frank fracture dislocation. There is traumatic disruption of one or more of the metatarsal bones from the tarsus. If you remember, the first three metatarsals articulate with three cuneiforms, the fourth and fifth with a cuboid. The actual Liz Frank ligament attaches the medial cuneiform to the second metatarsal base. The fracture dislocation can occur from direct trauma, like a car running over your foot, or indirectly if you have a load forced onto a plantar flexed foot. There are a few types of Liz Frank injuries, as you can see here, but really don't stress. The important thing is to suspect it from the mechanism and the pain and swelling in the midfoot. Then look for a larger gap than usual between the first and second metatarsal because the second metatarsal has been displaced laterally. If you're in doubt, compare it to the other side or CT or even MRI it. The treatment is open reduction and internal fixation. Finally, let's look at calcaneal fractures. What do you really need to know? They usually occur when someone jumps from a height or is involved in a motor vehicle accident. The fractures are generally divided into two types, broadly, depending on whether the subtalar articular joint is involved. So logically, they are called intraarticular or extraarticular. The intraarticular body fractures make up about 75% of all fractures, and treatment is operative. The extraarticular ones, like anterior calcaneal process fracture or a tuberosity avulsion fracture, are treated conservatively. When you look at the x-rays, seeing the fracture can sometimes be a little bit tricky. Using a loss of bowler's angle, as seen here, to less than 20 degrees, almost always means an intraarticular fracture is present. An axial view can also help, as can a CT. In fact, if I had a patient with a calcaneal fracture, I'd invariably get a CT scan. I should just mention lover's fractures. So named when a lover leaps from a height to escape the jilted husband. They're body fractures which can be intra or extra articular. Well, I hope your coffee stayed warm. 
I think that'll just about do for looking at calcaneal fractures, Liz Frank fractures, and of course the base, the fifth metatarsal fractures. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.